We are only limited by weakness of attention and poverty of imagination. That's the only limit we've got. Weakness of attention, got to focus on what it is you want. You've got to give it your undivided attention. And poverty of imagination. Use your imagination to build enormous pictures. See great things happening in your life. Make a decision to become one with whatever you want. A lot of people are wandering around, they don't know what to do. Their life isn't going where they want it to go, they're not doing what they want to do, and they're stuck. And they don't know how to change it. You see, we've got the ability to create the kind of life we want, but it doesn't happen by accident. Yet, if you don't gain an awareness of who you are and what makes you tick, odds are pretty good you'll never be free. Most people live in a little cage of their own making and they don't even know it. You and I are God's highest form of creation. There's nothing on the planet that will equal us. Now, I often point out that we're the only creature on the planet that's totally disoriented in our environment. It's true. All the other little creatures are completely at home in their environment. They blend in. We don't. We've been given the mental faculties to create our own environment. Yes, just that most people don't do a very good job of it. School doesn't teach us how to do it. You write to our educational system, come out and vir know virtually nothing about yourself. I want you to take your phone and look at it. And, and think of this. Let each of those lines on the screen represent a level of vibration. Everything the phone can do, you can do with your marvelous mind. We refer to these levels of vibration as frequencies. And there's an infinite number of frequencies. Now your phone, your phone has its own frequency. If I've got your number in my phone, I can hit send, bang, you get the message. Doesn't matter where you are. I could take a picture, hit send, and simultaneously with me hitting it, you'll have it. See, in truth, there isn't any time or space. That's an illusion. We're dealing here with energy and we're dealing with frequencies. We're dealing with energy. Everybody's phone has its own frequency. But you know, so do people. You can transfer pictures from your mind to somebody else's mind on the other side of the world, just the same as you can with your phone. Now, most people never really gain an understanding of that or how to do that. But everything you're thinking, you're sending off charges of energy. Thought is energy. Thought waves are cosmic waves that penetrate all time and space. Thought waves makes the laser look puny. It's the most potent form of energy is. Most people don't really know much about it. They don't think very much about it. Every great leader that has ever lived has been in complete and unanimous agreement that you and I become what we think about. They've disagreed on almost everything else but that one point. We truly do become what we think about. You know, most people think of what they don't want. They spend time thinking about what they don't want. I get so sick of living this way. I'm so tired of never being able to afford it. I'm so sick of not taking a nice vacation. I'm just sick. And, and that's all they're talking about and are attracting it. They've magnetized themselves to what they don't want. Well, if we will think of the phone, get it straight in your mind. Your mind works like the phone. Do you know that everything we want is already here? You're gonna find nothing's created or destroyed. Everything's already here, but we've got to get on the frequency that it's on. We've got to get on in tune with it. And when we do, it comes flying at us. Now, what the secret didn't do, it didn't teach you much about the law of attraction. Talked a lot about it, but didn't teach much about it. Law of attraction is a secondary law. It's not a primary law at all. Law of vibration is the primary law. That law decrees everything vibrates, nothing rests. This whole building and everything in it, you and me and everything in it, is moving, it's, it's energy and it moves. It's in a very high speed of vibration. This body we're living in moves. As we activate brain cells, everything in us starts to change. 
and we can activate those brain cells at will. And listen, most people don't listen. They talk and they hear, but they don't listen. You hear with your ears, you listen with your emotions. Now, everything you want, everything you want is also on its own frequency. I don't know what you want. If I were to sit with you one-on-one, -on -one, that's what I would be digging for. I would be asking questions and I would be wanting to figure out what do you want? And you know, most people don't know what they want. Look at your present results right now. I want you to really think about your results. If you're thinking about your income, look at your income. If you're talking about relationships, look at your relationships. If you're talking about your health, really take a good look at it. You're attracting what you're in harmony with. Now, if somebody had told me that when I first started, I wouldn't have liked it because I didn't like what was coming into my life. I didn't like it at all. But we've got to understand nobody's given it to us. If it's coming, we've earned it. If we don't like it, we can change it. It's so basic and so simple. Energy attracts like energy. This thing we're living in is a molecular structure. It's a massive energy and high speed of vibration. Yet whatever we're thinking controls the vibration we're in. Because as we think, we activate brain cells and that's what causes us to vibrate. Now, what you're thinking dictates how you feel. Feeling is the language of the subconscious. When you say, I feel, what you're really talking about is the vibration you're in. You say, I feel terrible. You're in a terrible vibration. Change your thinking. But you know, a person in a terrible vibration doesn't want to hear that. It's almost like they want to enjoy their misery. You know people like that. Now you see somebody else and they say, God, it just feels phenomenal. That they are choosing good pictures. Make a decision to become one with whatever you want. Do you know what the problem with most people? They don't know what they want. They really don't know what they want. And it's rather sad because you can have anything you want. There is absolutely no limits, none. I mean, anything you want, yeah, anything, anything. You create your own life. Doesn't matter what it is. There are laws that govern this whole universe. One of the laws that Carnegie gave us, that's one of the best, he said, any idea that is held in the mind, any idea, it doesn't matter what it is, any idea that's held in the mind, that's emphasized, that you keep thinking about. Now get this, that's either feared or revered. He said, any idea that's held in the mind that's emphasized, that's either feared or revered, will begin to close itself in the most convenient and appropriate form available. That's the perpetual law of transmutation. That's the law of the universe. Energy is always moving into form. Whatever you're thinking about, it's moving into form. It's like Van Gogh was asked how he did such beautiful work. He said, I dream my painting, and then I paint my dream. Write your goal on a card, tear the card loose in your pocket. Now what happens when I put my hand in my pocket and I touch the card, the sensory factor touch is affected. It sends a light message rifle firing through my central nervous system, strikes those cells in my brain, they're activated and the picture of my goal flashes on my mind. So you see, it's all electronic. You're much like your phone or like your computer. You're in charge and you can dictate what pictures you want coming on your mind. And that picture must move into form. That's an absolute law. We are only limited by weakness of attention and poverty of imagination. That's the only limit we've got. Weakness of attention, got to focus on what it is you want. You've got to give it your undivided attention. And poverty of imagination. Use your imagination to build enormous pictures. See great things happening in your life. What pictures are you holding on the screen of your mind? The only limit is weakness of attention and poverty of imagination. Now, attention is drawn through your higher faculty, the will. The will gives you the ability to focus on one idea to the exclusion of all outside distractions, okay? Now, there's two things that you have to know if you really want to live your dream. 
You have to know where you are. You have to know where you're going. You got to move in that direction. Now, there's why are there so many people stuck? Think. If we think about this, it's so simple. Why are so many people stuck? Our problem is in paradigms. A paradigm is what's in control of our life to a very large degree. And it's the paradigm that keep people stuck. A paradigm is a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior. Now think, a paradigm is a program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior. And get this, almost all of our behavior is habitual. Paradigms control your perception. Perception is a mental faculty. Animals do not have perception, humans do. Perception is one of the higher faculties that we've got. Your paradigm controls your use of time. Do you know that every one of us get exactly the same amount of time? We get all there is. No one gets any more than anyone else. Your paradigm controls everything. It also controls your creativity. You'll see some people are not creative and others are. That's not true, everybody's creative. You're creating God's image. Our problem is we got that reversed and we created God in our image. You are a creative being. You are truly a creative being. Your paradigm controls your effectiveness because it controls what you do, how you do it. Yet, of course, your effectiveness is going to dictate your productivity. How productive are you? Now get this, your paradigm controls your logic. This is huge. You'll have people say, well, you've got to be realistic. Or they could say, that's illogical. How often does logic stop you? Well, I just, well, you know, that's not realistic. If you can think it, you can do it when you think. And of course, it controls your ability to earn money. But you see, most people really don't understand money. All the money in the world is available to us. All we have to do is earn it. And working happens to be the very worst way to earn money. It's true. Listen, this guy studied 500 of the world's most successful people. And he pointed out in here, if you believe that hard work and honesty alone will bring riches, Perry the thought it's not true. Riches, when they come in huge quantities, are never the result of hard work. Riches come if they come at all in response to definite demands based upon the application of definite principles and not by chance or luck. That's all by law. There is no end to what you can earn. None. Now, paradigms keep you boxed in in all of those areas. It's just like there's a box around us. And every time we go to change, we hit the wall. And it doesn't happen. When you make up your mind, you're going to change the paradigm, the wall comes down. But I'm going to tell you something. That doesn't mean you're going to change right away. You make a decision, I'm changing this, that wall will come down. Then you'll be in a position to start moving and the wall is down. You're not bouncing off it anymore. And when you say, I'm going to change, just think of this, the change can be huge, absolutely huge. And the change is permanent. You will never go back. You see, awareness is something you cannot lose. Your spiritual DNA is perfect. Do you know what that means? It means there's perfection within every one of us. There's perfection within every one of us. Yet doesn't require any modification or any improvement. Absolutely none. There is perfection within you. And that perfection seeks expression with and through you. That's what causes you to want. My grandmother pretty well raised me. And I'm going to tell you something. Grandma was wrong on this score because she said you should be satisfied with what you've got. Grandma was wrong. Never. You should never be satisfied with what you've got. You should be happy with it. Dissatisfaction is a creative state. Dissatisfaction is going to get you to reach higher. Go further, run faster. Dissatisfaction is a creative state. It's the spiritual essence within us seeking expression through us. 
See, there's protection within us, and it wants to express itself with and through us. That's why you want. Everything you own when you die belongs to somebody else. You never own anything. You're merely a custodian. You should have it, and you should enjoy it, but you never own it. But what you are is yours forever. That's why we want to develop a greater awareness. We want to become aware of this perfection within us. Spirit's all-knowing. You know what that means? All the knowledge there ever was or ever will be is omnipresent. All the knowledge there ever was, all the power. You'll wonder, where does she get all the energy? Where does he get? Nobody gets energy. Everybody releases energy. Desire, it's the triggering message, lets it go. All the power there ever was or ever will be. Quit saying, oh, I'm tired, I don't know where you get all the energy. You've already got it. Release it. Desire. Desire is the triggering mechanism. And it doesn't matter where you are because it's omnipresent. We're connected to everything. Everything's connected to us. There is only one power. And that's the real you. Are you truly who you pretend to be? Come on. Wake up, get up, get out and make it happen.